Right, this is Sheila again. It's 2013, taking us back to 2007, October the 12th. I've been around Ifracombe, Woolacombe, Mortho, in the records department, in the museum, in graveyards, and I'm now spreading out to other villages. Kentisbury, uh, Paracombe, and um, Berenaba. These are just some of the villages where I've located um, some of Zara's ancestors. So I go in the churches, I look around the graveyards, I have a little wander around the villages, trying to absorb some of the areas where they lived in these lovely, beautiful, quaint little Devonshire villages. Quite cut off, really. Um, anyway, so here we go then, over to the tape recording, taking us back to 2007. Friday now. Can't remember what date. Um, Friday the twelfth of October. I'm now going off to some dirt villages. For example, Kentisbury first, then Paracombe. Might do Martin Ho. Then Baron Arbor. That's the stars. It's a bit greyer this morning, but it's mild. Saw a fox ass light creeping around um, where the pond area is, and it, it came right past the van as well. Uh, so that's it, really. Off we go. And the, the van keeps up. Now what I've decided to do is do the villages today and end up in a fracoon. And then um, go to Barnstable tomorrow because there's going to be a library open, even if it's in the morning. And quite often the libraries hold lots of useful local information. So I think that'll be the plan. And I'm going to get there. I'm going to gone early in the morning. I'm going to get there early. So I've got a chance to drive around it more than anything. Not just, not just the parking. It's driving around to get my bearings to see where the big church is. To see possibly where the library is, where the town centre is and where the car park is. Because I've got trouble with the van spitting out oil and making a horrible row. I need to do all that early before I get caught up in traffic, Saturday traffic. So I'll need to get up really early tomorrow. Over and out on my way to uh, Gentisbury. Oh my god, that was another hour of total stress. I'm driving up the wrong... Getting lost. Someone's not giving me proper directions. Getting lost. The van is struggling big time. I've managed to get to Kentisbury Village Hall. Can, the, the hedges are about 12 foot high, so you can't see over them. I can't see the church yet, so I'm just going to leave the van here to recover. It ain't going anywhere for an hour. And I'll see if I can go and find the church. I never thought I was going to get out of chairs then. I was getting so scared that I was never going to find this little place. And to be quite honest, it is in the middle of absolute. It's in the middle of nowhere, basically. Anyway, there's a village hall. Not the camera. I don't need a camera. I brought it. There's cars parked here. I should imagine they're from the school. There's about five cars parked here. The church has got to be somewhere. But there's like a bungalow or something over there, so I'm going to ask. There's no way I can move in my van for an hour. So I've taken a picture of Kentisbury Village Hall. But it looks like a church as well, so it could be that this is it. And there ain't an actual church. So I'm going to be wandering around country lanes now. There's a school over there. There's cows in the field. The 
church could be somewhere else, but I don't really think we found that. Right, I wandered down this um, bridle path a minute ago and found an old cottage that's being done up as a bed and breakfast. <coughs> and they pointed out where the church was. It's a quarter of a mile from the, the village hall. So I just have to keep walking, hope I don't get run over. Um, <coughs> and there was a, they've had a builder working with them on the site there, a Tony Lovering, whose family come from Ithracombe, and they have got very distant relations with the Loverings at Coombe Martin, so that's a Tony Lovering. Who was there on the site a minute ago? But he's um, not there at the moment. Oh, I'm really out of breath. I'm in trouble walking up this <coughs> <coughs> narrow lane. Is um, <coughs> uh, you know, the hedge is about 12, 15 foot high. And there's only a whip for one car. You know, she's also told me about um, how to get the paracoom. So I just head for that black, black water or whatever it's called and then I'll see the signs. Um, what's the other thing? So I'm out in the middle of nowhere, walking down a country lane after a good, good, stressful hour. But as the, the lady back there has admitted, it's not the easiest of places to find. Um, so, you know, weaving in and out with villagers, and the only problem, I'm not really bothered by that, but it's the stress on the car, on the van. It's having a rest at the moment, and I'm going to have to put some oil in it, I think. So it sounded to be getting more distressed as the time goes on. But you can see how this is going to take a whole day up and I have to get back to my museum before closing time to pick up the pictures. Sometimes it can take an hour or two to do a churchyard. Anyway, she's told me to keep going a quarter of a mile down this road. The walk would do me good. I can see the church ahead of me. I'll take a picture. There's a tower. It's quite a good picture to take actually at this view. Well, it's really rural. Loads of cow dung and smells of farms. They yeah, come into like a little triangle with a signpost pointing everywhere. Back more gates. I'm not sure these were going to do it, but it's a bloody hilly. The farm, or what might have been a vicarage at one point, is called it the Barton. It looks like a farm to me. Big old crooked chimney on top. I think might have worked in that farm. I've heard the name of it. There's a tree planted here as well. Diana, Prince of Wales, 1961 to 97. See if people don't realise that. You're going to find something like that in the middle of nowhere. It's quite an old, gothic-y looking church moss hanging from it. I'm going to have to try and get in the gate. <laughs> right, going in a clockwise direction, and that actually takes me up in the newer part of the grave. The front end of the church, opposite end of the tower. We've got West Lakes, Burnells, Barrows, Wallies and Camps here. Just doing a bit of a scan of the new ones. It's not, not that big a place, actually. The likelihood of finding anyone is pretty rare, I think. I don't know. Anyway, we'll have a quick look. <coughs> I've got Tucker's. Smith's. Purchase. Another Tucker. Smells of manure. Big time around here. A Dennis, a Shapland, Towers, Ashton. Another 
purchased. Herbert Brooks, William John Smallridge, George Henry Smallridge, John Walters. Let's get an idea of names where they're scanning. Simpsons, Brays, Keats, Tuckers, Parkers. I should have put my boots on again. Petherick. Coats, coats, Phillips, Bushen, Henry's, Huxtables, Nichols, Pether, X again, the purchase, purchase, Lee, Boyle, Parkin, Smith, the purchase, Walters, Barrow, Ireland, Bray, Coats, Lewis, Dinnercombe, Pyle, James Red Pierce, Busham, another Busham. I'm going to be around this before I knew it, I think. <coughs> Just scanning for some names, really. It's about there could be one in here, but. The likelihood that they've all overgrown and that as a Charles Harding. Another Smith, Smith, Smith spelt S M Y T H. John Richards. Another Tucker. Another Dennis, more Dennis's. Oh, I found a love ring. I knew there was one, yeah. Oh, I recognise the name as well. George Hartnell Lovering. Loving memory. Um, who died February the 3rd, 1897, age 76, also of Prudence. The beloved wife of the above, who died January the 10th, 1891, age 89. It's sort of a slaty type tall upright stone covered in calaplaca. You can just about make out the name, so I'll have to get in close for this one. Next to that is a George Tucker and who was 78 when he died in 1897 and Isabella, his wife, who died in 1901, age 84. Also Mary Stewart. Don't know what relationship she has, but she died in 19 something two, age 78. Could have been a daughter, but uh, yeah, I recognise that love ring name for sure. So I re recognise the heart and all that in it. I can't remember the link now, but I'll look it up. So, wasn't the waste. Something told me there was somebody here. Won't find more yet. There's quite a few hardings in here, Burgesses. Kind of up like decorated cross one on three plinths of James Irwin, who died February the 21st, 1902, age 73. Also, Dorcas, wife of the above, who died in 1905, age 65. That's James and Dorcas. I recognise that. Recognise that one as well, so I'll take a picture of that. Slocum's here. Some very, very old ones that go back probably the 17th century, I should imagine. Also on the back of the Irwin grave, we've got Elizabeth, wife of Joshua Irwin, who died January the 2nd, 1846, age 55. Also Elizabeth. Daughter of the above, who died 1845, aged 14. So we've got James and Dorcas and their daughter Elizabeth. I'll take a picture of that in a minute. This is quite a big one in the, if you compare it to the other ones in the graveyard. It looks a very old church. Parts of it look newer, like you've been added on. 
parts at the back, but um, the tower and the entrance porch look ancient. There's a couple of reed graves, big ones, next to Holly Bush, near, next to the Irwin grave. Right, it's St. Thomas's Church, Kentersbury. It's a very old one. It's got uh, figurines on the ceiling of the porch alone. I doubt it could be open. Oh, it is open. Oh, smells old and all. Reverend Charles Sweet, rector of this parish. He died in 1833, age 57. Yeah, it has had some extensive work done to the inside of it, actually. Cleaned out the walls and redone. of it. Good. We found a Lovering, Grave and an Irwin, and I think I recognise both names, especially the Hartnell Lovering one. I think they're linked. Yeah, that's a very old church and a big one, considering there's hardly anything visible around. You know what I need. There's a farmhouse here and a farmhouse there. There's, I can't really see any. There might have been in the past, perhaps more cottages and things. A big church. Right then. I managed to find a crossroad going towards Linton. Uh, right, I'm going to stop that because I'm now off to another village. So I think I'll stop there. I've just done Kentisbury and found a Lovering and an Irwin and I managed to get inside the church as well. So I've decided to stop there on this particular recording. Uh, what I remember about it was 
really, really high hedges, um, very narrow lanes, and getting lost here and there. Okay, and having a very oily VW camper van. Right then, over and out for now.